Today we're going to be working on the Ryzen 9 CPU. It came in for repair. I do not know if this one is a case of bent pins or broken pins or both, but we're going to find out. And we're going to be working on this using the version 2 of the microscope. And it's a huge difference compared to version 1, even though version 1 of the microscope was excellent. But this one is even better. You see a lot more details compared to version 1. And they are in stock. If you have not already purchased one, you can log in to northridgefix.com, click on shop, and you can buy it. The ring light sells as a separate item, so you can look for the 96 LED light on our site. And the only thing that we do not sell along with the microscope is the stand, the articulating arm stand. But we did contact the factory, and we are making a deal. We may get them in 30 to 45 days. The deal is already going, and it has to be done to our specifications. In the meantime, if you bought the microscope package, you can buy the articulating arm from Amscope. I left a link in the description on our website. Just click on it and you'll be able to see. I did talk about dynamic range, bigger sensor, better image quality, better in low light, even though light is not a concern for us because we are using the 96 LED ring light, which provides more than sufficient light. A slight bent pin here, not a big deal. fixed. The pin alignment does not have to be 100% perfect, but it should not be off the axis. It should not be off by, let's say, 10 degrees or 20 degrees. One, two, three degrees is okay because there's room for play on the socket. So the pins, for the most parts, they look perfect. Alignment of the pins are nice, all of them. I'm not seeing a single pin that is out of alignment. If there is a pin that's out of alignment, it's probably by two or three degrees, which is okay. And look at this, I found it. I found it right here. We have a broken pin right over here and we do not know what that pin does but the customer probably mailed it over because the CPU is not working due to this broken pin. Let's continue with the inspection. It looks like that's the only problem with the CPU. I mean, those pins are microscopic. That pin that appears big under the microscope is very tiny, very, very small. So when handling the pin or the soldering of the pin, we have to be super careful. And we have to make sure that when we apply hot air to remove whatever is left over or when we apply hot air to solder a pin, we do not disturb other pins on the CPU. People always mail those CPUs over and they blame me for the damage. They watch a video and they think it's easy. When they go to do it, they end up damaging 10, 20 pins that I have to manually solder one by one. It creates more work for me, but what can you do? Now we're gonna remove whatever is left over and we're gonna grab a pin from a donor board and I have one right next to me, right here. We're gonna grab pins from here and the pins on this one, the donor, is the same size as the customer's CPU. So let's start by removing this pin. Maybe we can zoom in. Just like that. and apply just a tiny bit of flux. And people up to this day, they ask what type of flux are you using? I don't know. We have to think that we have new viewers every day, so I cannot expect new viewers to know what I spoke about in the rest of the videos. So we're gonna keep mentioning. 
The flux that I use is Amtec, Inventec Amtec 559, and we are a distributor for the flux. You can log in to northridgefix.com, click on shop, search for 559, and you can buy as an individual syringe or wholesale. Prices are posted. You buy five syringes, you get 5% off. 10 syringes, 10% off. 25 syringes, 25% off. And that's how it's done. If you are a reseller or you are buying the flux so you can resell, you can go for the 25 syringes. If you need more, let us know and we'll see if we can give you a greater discount depending on the quantity. I mean, right now, to be honest, we do not need to reapply solder. We can use solder that's already on the board. But it doesn't hurt to do this, right? Let's apply just a tiny bit of flux, just like that. And now we're going to grab a pin from a donor CPU. And the CPU that we're going to grab the pin from dates back to World War I. Or maybe before. I do not know how old the CPU is. You tell me. <laughs> and I do not know what type of thermal paste or what type of mud was put on here. But who cares? Let's grab a pin. Let's take this one out of the way. And we are done. We are done. That's it. Oh man, that was so easy. Right. Of course it's easy. That's why we get all those CPUs in because viewers of the channel, they attempt this and then they realize that it's going to take a lot of practice and good tools and good flux and a good tweezer and a good hot air station. And even after you have all the tools and you have everything, make sure that your hands do not shake. Otherwise, you're going to make a big mess. And that only comes with practice. Unless, of course, you have some medical problem where your hands shake, but otherwise you can practice. And practice makes perfect. I always say it. Practice is the mother of all skills. You're not born with that skill. You learn it. Same thing as everything else in life. You're not going to wake up the next day and you're a great basketball player or football player or whatever. Or you know how to play the piano. It takes a lot of practice, a lot of hours, a lot of hours. What book should I read? There are no books to read. You can read all you want. If you do not sit under the microscope and practice, it's not going to matter. You're not going to learn. Reading is one thing and applying is another. You may have a great idea in your head. Maybe you have an idea of inventing a ring that has a watch in it, whatever. If you do not work on making that idea happen, that's never going to happen. The idea is nice. The idea is great. But idea is one thing. Thinking about it is one thing. And applying and doing it is something else. We're done. Right now, we're going to tilt that board. And you cannot even tell that we soldered a new pin on here. I cannot even tell. I doubt it myself that I soldered it on this side or on this corner or where. Right there, that's where we soldered the pin, right here. Right here, can you tell? No, great. So we did a good job. If you cannot tell, it means we did a good job. I'll be right there. And just a quick interruption, UPS is here to pick up the packages. The post office already picked up, FedEx already picked up. And now it's UPS's turn. Most of the packages that UPS picks up, they are going overseas. I would say 50% of the packages are going overseas because their prices are the best when it comes to shipping out the country, outside the country. 
We have a lot of customers that ordered the V2 microscope from Ireland, Australia, Europe, Netherlands. I do not know what other countries ordered. Cyprus also. All right, and in the meantime, we had a customer that came in, he watches our channel, and he brought in an Atari motherboard. And he wants one chip desoldered off the board, this chip right here. He said he does not have the tools or the experience to take this one out, so he just wants the chip out, and he wants to replace it with a socket. But he did not bring the socket, he just wants me to desolder that chip. Let's take a look, maybe we'll include it in this video and the customer will be happy to see it and see how that process is done. And let's switch over to our amazing V2 microscope. And like I said, it's a pleasure working under this microscope, doing whatever, because everything is so clear. Everything is so nice. So this one here, to remove it, we're going to have to apply low melt solder on the back legs. We can do it two ways. We can apply hot air and remove it, but the chip is big, we're going to have to expose the board to a lot of heat and we have aluminum capacitor right here and we have some on the side of the connector and I think right now the best way to do it would be to apply low melt solder on back of the board and we'll desolder it that way and the pins are right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and eight, 16 pins. That way I can demonstrate for you, for the one millionth time, the magic of using Lumel solder. Let's try to desolder that chip, 16 pin chip, using Lumel solder. We're gonna apply flux on those pins, and flux on those pins. or these pins. And last time I mentioned that my big soldering iron tip is lost and it may have exited to the ninth dimension, but I found it. Somehow it slipped and fell in the box where I put all the motherboards for the Nintendo Switches. But I got it. And let's use low melt solder. And we're gonna apply it right over here, right over here. And a little bit of low melt solder goes a long way. I always mention it. And now you're gonna see how easy it will be to desolder that chip using the magic of low melt solder. Let's do this here. And the legs are already moving. All right, flip the board. And now what we can do is we can use a little bit of hot air and we should be able to easily remove that chip. Look at this.
You see? It would have taken an extreme amount of heat to desolder that chip if it wasn't for low melt solder. Now we're gonna desolder those holes or the solder that's going through the holes. And we'll take it one step at a time. It should not take a lot of effort because we are using low melt solder, look at this. And we are using an amazing wick, that's why. But since we have a lot of solder inside the holes, we may have to cut the wick every once in a while. Just like that. And that capacitor on the bottom is bothering me because it's high and I'm not able to get the wick all the way down flat with the board, but let's try it sideways. and we desoldered all the holes without damaging the rings because those rings are fragile and you can easily break them if you're not careful. Now let's use that same wake to go over the rings right here, but I do not feel comfortable in that position. So let me rotate the board. When was the last time I saw one of those resistors? My God. Let's do it that way. And we're done. We are done. Let's flip the board and clean it from the back. And that chip desoldering is better than factory, right? I mean, not only soldering can be better than factory, but also desoldering. Now, if the customer want to install a socket, he can just put the socket in, but he'll need to know how to solder that socket in place. I agree that the soldering is harder on that chip than soldering, but soldering will take practice. If you never soldered before, then most likely you're not going to be able to solder a socket or a chip. But the customer just wanted us to desolder the chip and that's it. Do not argue with the customer. All right, we're done. We're going to end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions, and we'll do something else in the next video.